Hey guys, so this video is to go over domain and range of functions as well as determining the intervals on which the function is increasing, decreasing, or constant. So we're going to start off by just acknowledging the domain and range of this function right here. The domain, which I colored in green, is going to identify all of the x values that are part of the function we're looking at. So since this arrow is pointing all the way to the left, that means that the domain begins at negative infinity. This is going to be continuous up until this point right over there. So we use this interval notation, so it's from negative infinity until this x value. So your domain refers to the x values, which is negative 1, 2, 3. So negative 3, it's colored in, so it's included, so we use a square bracket. Then there's a gap in the x values. That gap could be teeny tiny, could be one point, could be many points. When there's a gap, we acknowledge that with the u for union. And now we're going to pick up at the x value of 2. There's the origin, so 1, 2. That x value is where we begin, but I'm using a parenthesis because 2 is not included in the domain. It's an open circle, and this line continues until forever, so we write infinity. Okay, so there's our domain. And now for the range. The range is going to identify the y values. So the domain, we went from left to right. For the range, we're going to go from the bottom to the top, from small to big. So from down here, the graph is this piece. Which y values are being used? Well, really, because of these two horizontal lines, we only have two y values being used. One of them is negative 2, and the other one is 1, 2, 3, 4. Since there's two points, and I can count them, right? I can count only two of them. I'm going to use set builder notation. So I'm going to list negative 2, comma, 4. It's not an interval. Set builder notation, and then close out my bracket right there. Now, we're going to talk about increasing, decreasing, and constant. A function, and I'm even going to point at the other picture. A function will be increasing when it has a positive slope. It doesn't need to be linear. It can be curved, but it needs to be look like it's going up when we move from left to right. So I already see that over here on this piece. As you move from left to right, it is increasing. You wouldn't say that this is increasing, okay, because you're going from left to right when you describe it. So an increasing interval would refer to a piece that looks like this. Decreasing, which I colored in blue, would refer to a piece that looks like this right here. And constant, which I colored in this purple color, would refer to something that has a slope of zero. Slope of zero, positive slope, greater than zero, negative slope, less than zero. Okay, so if you want some note for yourself on the side, you might say m is greater than zero. You might say here m is less than zero. And at the end for constant, m equals zero. So, oh, obviously you couldn't see that, but I wrote it over there. Okay, so I'm gonna move that back now. I guess I could leave it here for now. Okay, so this one up here is only ever constant. So increasing and decreasing, I would leave blank. There's no answer to that because this function is not increasing or decreasing anywhere. Constant. Now, the way you write these is similar to the domain. It refers to your x values. You're not going to refer to your y values for this. Okay, I'm probably going to say that a million times, but you describe these intervals using the x values from left to right. Okay, so I'm going to say that this is constant from negative infinity until now. I don't include the endpoints because... For example, in a future example you'll see, such as this one. If I described this interval as doing one thing, and then this interval is doing something else, how do you decide what it's doing at the vertex? You can't decide which side to give it to, so you don't include it in either, okay? So whenever we have an endpoint, you just don't include it, okay? So it goes until negative three with a parenthesis union, and then we start up to until infinity. So almost the same as the domain, except we're not going to use any square brackets, okay? And really that's it. If you want to kind of really show that there's no answer to this, draw a line. Um, you want to say something like the empty set, empty set, empty set, um, or really draw an empty set with nothing in it. I guess you could, but you could just leave it blank. Okay, example two. I guess I'll leave this other one in sight for reference. Now, my domain, x values. So here's my origin, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I'm going to start up at negative 5 for the domain, and let's see what happens. So negative 5, comma. Now, I have graph included, all right, from negative 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. I still have graph included, but this one ends. However, as soon as this one ends, this one picks up. 
and this one goes on forever. If these were both colored in, it would not be a function because it would fail the vertical line test. This one being closed and this one being open, though, means that the domain continues all the way until infinity, even though this is what we would call a discontinuous function because you have to pick up your pen or pencil to draw it, but the domain is continuous itself because every x value is being used, okay? This, the function is not continuous. All right, now the range. Range is talking about the yellow y-axis. If I'm all the way down here at negative infinity, will I have graph? You betcha, because that's going down forever. So my range does start from the bottom, negative infinity, okay? Now, working my way upward, <clears throat> I go up to here and this one's open. Similarly, this one is closed. So as soon as this one quits, this one picks up and this one keeps going until there and then there's nothing else above it. So it looks like it's going from negative infinity until positive two and two is included. Increasing, decreasing, constant. Well, by my color coordinating, you could tell it's not constant anywhere. <clears throat> Increasing x values, okay, from left to right. Increasing, I'm going to start at this x value, whatever one this is, all right, so this x value right here until this x value, and then decreasing is going to start at this x value, and it looks like it just keeps going on. You do not refer to the y values. So increasing, I'm going to use a bracket, that's negative 5, comma, oops, I'm lying, I'm not going to use a bracket, I just said that a second ago and I distracted myself. You don't use a bracket, so hopefully you were thinking that yourself parentheses because we can't include that spot right there. Negative 5, comma. So this is where we start. Now you don't have to pick up your pen. So you're going, 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 going till here. Zero. And that's where it's increasing. So these are both parentheses. Now with decreasing, I start here. Going, 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 going forever. So I start at zero until infinity. You would not use set notation on something like this. You would not put the curly brackets and list a whole bunch of numbers, okay? You'll never stop listing. You, just because these are big solid dots doesn't mean that those are the only numbers. These are all points forever, okay? So these are just two examples to get you started, and hopefully it helps give you a little uh, clarity here. Um, it's possible to have a, an interval that um, has a union in it. It's possible to not have it happen at all, okay? Um, you will see square brackets happen on domain or range. You'll see... Um, set notation happen on domain and range. Here, in these, the only set you'll see is the empty set. Otherwise, interval notation, whether it's one interval, two intervals, three intervals, okay? So you have a bunch of examples to try it yourself. So I'm wishing you the best. If you want to color coordinate things yourself, you can do that as well. And remember, if it's changing direction somewhere, going from one thing to another, don't include that point in your increasing, decreasing, or constant interval, but it, obviously it's included in your domain or your range. And just because this is not included in my range here doesn't mean this one doesn't make up for it, right? So this number might not be in my range on the side, but it is in my range there. This guy looks like um, it's going to flatten out. For anyone that's curious, I would guess that there's an asymptote here, and it's just going to approach till right about that number. Um, it doesn't look like it's going up any further. All right, so good luck, and I hope you are able to figure all of these out.